Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Garage Bouillon and another episode on my Porsche 924 Turbo. The previous episode was about four to five months ago and really this car has not moved from its spot. That's not normally the way I treat my cars. It still has the grime on it from the road trip to Le Mans, so it hasn't even been washed. But in this episode, we are going to see if we can get this car back into top form again. So if we look on the floor here, you'll see I've got a new or rather a used but very good quality section of exhaust that sits directly behind the turbo and the wastegate. And on the floor here, I have a J-pipe that came to me all the way from the US from a subscriber. Thank you very much for setting me up. And over here, I have a set of Sonic nut splitters because as you remember in the previous episode, why we stopped is because I couldn't get the nuts off the J-pipe. So in theory, I have everything I need to get this car fixed again. The question is if I have all the tools I need, um, but I have a deadline on this guy. It has to vacate the garage because the Safari is coming back. So if I can't fix it, then for the first time in seven years, I'll have someone fix it for me. So I'm going to get the 968 off the quick jacks and get the 924 onto the quick jacks. So sit back, relax, and let's start working. Just before we start rolling the intro, this is future me talking to you. And as you can see, I've already been busy on the car. This has been an extremely difficult job. Um, I've never had so much difficulty and so many problems when I was working on a car as I have been on this one for the last couple of days. I want to warn you that the filming is not great. Um, there's probably not a great storyline in this episode. This is just me struggling to get this car back on the road. If you're looking for a nicely bottled episode, then I would say wait for the next one on the 968. But if you just want to see what I do on a day-to-day -day basis in my garage, then please enjoy and let's start working. So for those of you that need a refresher, these are the two nuts that need to be removed. And since I already have this exhaust section lying on the floor, I'm going to take this out first because I think it'll just ease my access to that J-pipe a little bit. For that, I need to remove the four nuts that holds the exhaust to the turbo. And back here, I have to remove the four nuts that hold it to the wastegate. So let's hope they all break free and that I don't have any issues with nuts not playing along. So that's a bit of a success. I've got four nuts, four washers. They all came off, no fight whatsoever. Now I just gotta go back over here to the wastegate, try and get them off. I'm expecting them to come off, but you never know. And then we are halfway to uh, getting this exhaust off. Right, so unfortunately this wastegate is not as happy a story as the turbo was. These guys are all stuck on real, real, real good. Um, I'm not getting them loose. So I think the next best thing is for me to drop the wastegate in its totality, which means I have to remove this banjo bolt over here. Hopefully that guy comes loose and then the wastegate will drop together with this exhaust. And then I can try and remove this off the car. Right, let's see if we can get you loose. You don't seem to be fighting me too much. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. That's already loose, that's good. Okay, one banjo bolt loose. In theory, that is the wastegate disconnected from the car. So we should be able to slip it through this hole. Oh, 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 
this rear part loose it's still hanging on the hanger over there and it's still hanging inside the turbo so now it's a matter of us just getting this thing out of the car A little bit of luck, I should now be able to get this exhaust off the turbo. Getting there. Looks like the J-pipe is actually holding me back. So I am going to cut through the J-pipe and then hopefully we'll be able to get the rest of the exhaust out. All right, so you guys can see the carnage that took place underneath my car. The exhaust is removed from the turbo, the wastegate is out of the car, and I cut off the J pipe over here. And if you look over there, that's the rear silencer and over there you can see the wastegate standing on the old center silencer. So I haven't been able to film much of this because it's nearly impossible to work down here. But I have figured something out and let me also show you. I've managed to get one nut off. This one over there still fighting me all the way. But I figured that I can get access to that nut by removing this bracket that holds the block to the motor mount. I managed to get all three of those Allen heads loose. I, that was for me the most important bit to see if I can get them loose, which actually worked. So now I'm going to prop the block up somewhere around here so that we can remove this guy. And the good news about removing this guy is it also makes it possible for me to remove the motor mount which i wasn't able to do the last time so i'm going to get going on this motor mount bracket um, and then hopefully i can get to this last j-pipe nut bolt and then i can get the j-pipe off and then maybe with a little bit of luck i can start building this up again So let me show you what I'm dealing with. This stud here snapped off uh, and I started making good progress with a cobalt drill and then that drill snapped off. So now I'm trying to drill it out with a bigger drill. I don't know if I'll be able to get this guy out. I'm pretty close to giving up and uh, having someone else do it for me because my deadline is getting really, really close and I'm nowhere near completing the work on the scar, as you can see and I need to vacate this garage. So um, I'm gonna try and drill this out. Um, hopefully I get it loose and then I can drop a new thread in there with a helicoil and hopefully we can get the exhaust back on. <laughs> I managed to get it out and I didn't damage too much of the thread so I don't even have to helicoil this thing I'm just running my uh, thread cleaner through it I've gone three or four times already gotta do it one last time and then I think we are ready to start building this exhaust again but first I'm going to replace this motor mount all right so to get to the motor mount bolt we have to go down there and you see that's a one that's a 17 millimeter nut and that's a 17 millimeter nut once we loosen those two, we should be able to drop the motor mount down the car. All right, so I've got the right hand side out of the car and you can see she's not, the spring is not broken. She's not in terrible, terrible shape. If you shake it, you can hear it's uh, wobbly. So this is the rebuilt unit. And if you look down here, you can see there's no movement on this guy. And if you shake it, it's not loose. So this should improve the way the car drives by quite a bit. 
right that's one nut on now we can go to the top of the car again and get it tightened up now the trick is to not cross thread this this nut uh, it looks like it's going okay i'm hoping I just want to tell you guys that you should really invest in this little Makita mini ratchet. This has saved me in so many occasions the past year that um, I can't believe I ever existed without it. I'll put a link to this kit in um, the description. If I didn't have this, there was no way I could get to that top little Allen head bolt. Um, this guy was my savior. Go out and buy this. You can thank me later. Now the only thing left to do is to put a bottle jack underneath this area and jack the, the engine up again so that I can get a bolt to catch on the stud and then we are done on this side. You can see I've got the nut off, I've also got the nut removed at the top. And I am currently supporting the motor with this uh, brush, with this wire brush. It's just thick enough to fit between the sump and the cross member. So what I do have to do now is I need to just lift it up a little bit, then take out that wire brush so that I can drop it just about half a, half a centimeter more so that I can get the motor mount out because it's just a little too tight. This is such a precarious little thing. But anyway, we'll get it to work. There we go. Okay. That should be good enough for me to get this out. Yes, it is. And now I need to gently bring the block down. Not too much. Just enough for us to get it out. See if that's good enough. Oh, you can't get to this thing. Fuck's sakes. Is it out? Not yet, needs a little bit more. A little bit more. Let's try that. Oh, so close. So close. Okay, a little bit more. A little bit more. We're not touching it. No, we're not touching there either, which is good. We can still drop a little bit. about it I think let's see yes it's out one more let's get the other one in I've got the nuts on the top now fastened for the driver's side motor mount and to just give you a bit of an idea of the problem you are dealing with um, I think right down there, if I try and focus, there you go. You can see one of the nuts. The other one, you can't even see. It's completely obscured. So now I can do the bottom and then we've got the motor mounts completed for this car. Okay, that's it. She's in. <clears throat> so that's two motor mounts in. So now we get back to the exhaust. Come on. Come on. Come on. I think it broke. Fuck. It broke.
thousands of tears later. All right, so I've gone and I've cut the weight cast off the uh, exhaust pipe. So I cut through here and I cut through here. So this is still the exhaust pipe flange that's on here and it's still on the bottom as well from the J pipe. So these things still needs to come off. But this is the only way I could get the nut splitter on here. So hopefully now I'll be able to split that nut and then uh, maybe we can get this uh, flange off. All right, so after a lot of persuasion with a hammer and a chisel, I managed to get both of these exhaust flanges off of the wastegate. And now you can see this little broken off stud a little bit better. I think I'm going to take this to an engineering works to extract because um, I think this is extremely brittle and I don't want to apply force to it. And they've got better tools than I do to get these studs out. So I'm going to get that done. And I also was not really planning on opening up this waste gate, but since it was such a job to get to it, and I do have all of the stuff I need to rebuild it with, which I bought about four years ago, I've got a new diaphragm in here. And I've got a new re-sleeve kit and a new washer and all kinds of things. So I actually have all the things I need to rebuild it. And it's fairly straightforward to rebuild. You basically just have to open up this guy so we can pull out the valve and then clean it all up. I'm thinking this will be good for the car because I have a suspicion that the valve is not doing a great job anymore. I don't know how old this diaphragm is. If this is 40 years old, it's guaranteed to be leaking. And if it's leaking, then most likely this valve is stuck, which means it's probably over boosting. First thing we need, so the first thing we need to do is I just need to clamp this area down to this area because inside here is a big spring. And I don't want things flying around. That'll do. This clamp is like really old. It's vintage. I got this clamp for free with my house. And now we can loosen these 10 millimeter nuts. Now I've got all six nuts removed that holds the spring onto the valve and in theory if I just softly loosen this up the housing should pop open and not fight me too badly. Okay, it's looking good. Got it. Ow. But we got it. All right. Let's see what we're dealing with. So that's the spring, which seems to be missing a shim, which is not good. And there should be, sh oh, the shim is in there. Okay. There's the shim. So that's it's on top like that. And there's a shim for the bottom and the diaphragm which actually does not look all that bad to be honest okay and it looks like this diaphragm might have been replaced up by the previous owner two days later all right, so you can see I've got the valve in my hand and I've got the valve seat in my hand and the eight studs have been removed. All of the threads have been recut, so it's looking really, really nice. The engineering works told me that this was an incredibly tough job even for them and they spent the best part of five hours getting the eight studs out, but they did a great, great job. There's no damage to this whatsoever. It looks perfect. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm just going to be sanding this seat down very lightly it's it there's no pits or anything in here i just want to make sure i've got all the carbon deposits off the same goes for the seat and then i'm going to take apart the rest of this housing to make sure that i can replace the gasket that sits down there <music> Thank you. 
We have to be careful of this as this is asbestos, so I'm going to just spray it in with some WD-40 so it doesn't make any um, dust. That should solve it. Alright, so we've got the waste cut on its component form on the workbench here and the first thing I need to do is put this guy back together with this one and for that I'm diving into this rebuild kit that I've got to get the new gasket. Right, that goes on to there and then make sure that this hole is pointing towards the back of this unit which means it goes on like this right and then I'm going to be reusing the lock nuts that came off of here because there's nothing wrong with them and they are still in very good nick that should do all right, next thing is to get this guy back in. And uh, as you saw, I cleaned it as much as I possibly can. What I'm going to do is I'm just gonna use a little bit of high friction grease. There we go. So now we can put this aside. And then we start working on the diaphragm. That drops in there. Ah! Then the cup. Like that, and then another washer on the top. And then it gets a little lock nut. Now we bend her over. Something like this. You can go in. Like that. Make sure that the silicon cup is completely over the lip here, that it doesn't just sit on top of it, because the idea is that this little groove in here should clamp on that little wider part. And if you don't clamp it down properly, you won't have an airtight seal, which means you won't get the uh, valve working for you. The last thing is make sure that this guy is pointing slightly away from this one, which means it goes on like so. And now, I will have the difficult task of compressing this down and catching one or two of them with a nut so that I can bring a clamp in and fully force it down. All right, that'll hold for now. So now I have a fully rebuilt wastegate, but that leaves me with a question which I'm not quite sure what is the best approach to bringing the center silencer in the car with the wastegate. So I think I'm going to just try 
and get the center silencer in the car without the wastegate and see if I can get the wastegate in after. I really don't know what's the best option here, so we're gonna figure it out together. <laughs> All right, so we got the wastegate installed. As you can see, we still need to get the J-pipe on, but all of the nuts and bolts are on. Now that I've got the wastegate nice and tight, I can now start tightening up the turbo. onto the bottom of the wastegate and that is because the studs are a little bit long um, especially this one I can't I can barely get a finger between the exhaust and the stud so I think I'm going to remove this stud and then put the J-pipe on and then bring the stud in again once that is done if removing only this one doesn't work I probably would have to remove more of them but let's see I'll start with just this one So I've got the J-pipe onto the wastegate and as you can see I removed the starter motor to give me a bit more space to get to this last nut that you see up here. It's the only way I could really tighten that down. This has been an epic battle. I've been busy with this single stud for at least two hours. Um, I don't know why they made this car. This car is not made to work on. But anyway, I've got it in, so I'm gonna put the starter back and then I am going to tighten up the last bolts on the J-pipe up there. And then this section of the exhaust is done. One minute, 37 seconds later. All right, so you can see I've got the starter motor back in and if we look up here, you can see I've got the two nuts screwed onto the J-pipe at the top. You'll see that these are copper nuts. Um, I've chosen those over the Porsche lock nuts just because I don't want to have trouble with these guys the next time I need to do work on this engine. The only downside is that the hanger that holds the midsection to the torque tube, the little rubber grommet that holds the two things together actually snapped. Uh, it just aged out. And unfortunately it's a Sunday morning and this car is being picked up tomorrow morning by Porsche Center Gelderland to get a roadworthiness done and to get a four wheel alignment done for me. So I'll just ask them to put in a new rubber. At least that's a small job. It won't cost me a fortune. So that means we can now move on to installing the rear section. system is back in the car right so the last thing left for us to do is to start her and to see if i've made any improvement in that noise that we heard in the previous video all right the battery is a bit weak but let's hope we can get it to fire up all right the battery was a bit weak so i've got to jump to the 968 that looks a lot better Let's give it a go. Oh, she sounds like my old car again. She's a little 
lumpy after five months, but uh, the exhaust sounds good. Very happy with this. And there we go, she sounds great. Back to the way she was. If you've gotten this far into this video, I would like to thank you for watching. I know this was a tough one to watch. There's a lot of stuff happening, not the best of filming, but I really do appreciate your support. And I hope that this has helped you if you have to do this kind of job in your car. We've done the exhaust, we've done the wastegate, we've done the motor mount. These are all things that are pretty difficult on a 924 turbo. Probably the worst jobs that you can ever want to do, except for maybe the clutch. So next time, we are going to continue the work on the 968. And I am planning to start working on the insides of the doors to get them all cleaned up and get them all working. So if you are not yet subscribed to my channel and you like these kinds of videos with me working mostly on transaxles, but sometimes on some other things, please consider subscribing and you will be notified of my next episode that's coming out very soon. Until next time, guys. Goodbye.